and welcome to Your Vote Counts, a public information, nonpartisan program designed to get you acquainted with the candidates running for the 2024 primary election for Salem City Mayor, Salem City Council, Marion County Commissioner, and Polk County Commissioner. These interviews were created by Capital Community Media with assistance from American Association of University Women and the League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties. All candidates were invited and all but one chose to participate. Candidates did not receive the questions prepared by the League of Women Voters in advance. Candidates were invited to prepare a two-minute opening covering their background and qualifications for the office and a two-minute closing. I'm Alice LaViolette with the League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties, and I would like to introduce Julie Hoy, who is running for Mayor of Salem. Candidate Hoy, welcome, and we look forward to hearing your opening remarks. Thank you very much. Shall I go ahead? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm Julie Hoy, and I have lived in Salem for 32, 32 years on Center Street in the same house. I uh, raised my kids here, and uh, they were educated here, and now they work here, and we, uh, we've enjoyed our time on Center Street. We've managed to watch things change a bit over that uh, span of time, uh, and not necessarily for the better. Uh, it's gotten uh, easy to see the problems on our streets. Uh, my husband and I own a restaurant on Lancaster, so I live where we have issues and I work where we have issues uh, with homelessness and addiction and mental health issues. And it's been very difficult for me to watch. I've served on council for about 18 months now, maybe a little more. And I've watched the dysfunction in leadership and I can no longer sit by and do that. So I've decided to step up the game and uh, participate a little more heavily in what's happening and can't wait to lead in a new way for Salem. So thank you. Thank you for your int introduction, candidate Hoy. And now for our first question. What is your experience in working with diverse groups? What could be done to create a broader base for city planning and decision making situations? For city planning and decision making situations. When I think about diversity, I think about the ward that I live in. It's Ward 6 in Northeast Salem. It's the highest density population ward. Each ward has about 22,000 people in it, but our ward has 48% Hispanic population. Out of the 22,000 people in that ward, less than 2,000 vote. So I feel there's been a real lack of engagement and education, and I hope to change that. Thank you, thank you for your answer. Our next question is, how do we create a vibrant and livable downtown for businesses and citizens? Consider areas like empty buildings, parking, park plans, and cleanliness. Well, homelessness is a big issue in Salem right now. I have business owner friends who are downtown who deal with issues daily. It's making it difficult to sustain business. It's making it difficult for customers to come in and shop. I myself stopped downtown to pick up a little something from a friend's place and the door was locked at 11 a.m. and there was a customer on the other side of the window that said, you have to have an appointment if you want to come in. She opened the door and explained that if there's no more than one person working, then they can't unlock the doors during the day. I'm not okay with that and I want better for Salem. Thank you. Um, for our next question, Tell us about the composition of the Budget Committee and its process. That's a really good question, Alice. Um, it's When I came into council uh, a year ago was the first opportunity for me to see a city budget in person. It was dropped down in front of me about two and a half, three inches thick, 460 some pages, and I didn't know what to do about that. I'd had nothing to do with its creation. I didn't know much about what was in it, and I took it to coffee with a girlfriend. And in the first 30 minutes, she eats budgets for breakfast, but she found a million dollar error in that budget. I was very concerned and I feel like it's super important that we take a close look because we need to know what's in the book 
on all the pages. And in order to be able to pay for the things that we need to pay for and prioritize appropriately, uh, we need to do a better job of that. Thank you. Our next question is, other than raising taxes, what are some alternative local funding sources? I'll come back to the budget. That's the place where I want to start. The city insisted on creating a, re a revenue task force, and I was more interested in taking a look at the budget. I wanted a budget task force, but I didn't get my wish. And those two things, I've been informed, will run parallel, not together. The revenue task force job is to find more money. The budget, is, budget committee's job is to figure out the budget. So I would like those two things to intersect. I'd like to know how much money we actually need. Frankly, the dollar amount has, since I came on council, has flopped from 9 to 15 to 23 to 29, and now the revenue task force is stuck with a $15 million figure to fill. So I don't really know what the actual number is, and I'd like to find out more about that. Okay, thank you for that. Um, our next question is, what do you see as the role of the city in addressing employment issues? How do we create jobs that address both declining economy and green jobs issues? Well, the first part of that question, I believe, has to do with everything else I've said, and that's cleaning up the current situation and making sure that we have, well, I just believe we have livability issues, frankly, and we need to make it a place where people want to come and live and raise their families and invest and grow and create jobs. I own a business, we employ about 21 people, and it's been difficult, honestly, since COVID to keep folks in the building um, doing the jobs. We're, I like to say we're thin but mighty right now, still, I believe, feeling the after effects of the pandemic. Um, so we can get there, but we have to make it a place that is welcoming, um, that's inviting for businesses to come and know that they're going to be um, shopped at and purchased from and all that. Thank you. Um, our next question is, what are some of the projects made possible by the 2024 legislative designated funds? I'd like to skip that question because I don't, I don't understand what that's. Can okay. you read it one more time for me? Mm -hmm. What are some of the projects made possible by the 2024 legislative designated funds? You're free to interpret that question in any way. I kind of believe it's referring to city projects that were maybe funded with state funds. Well, not being clear on what it, the, the answer you're after, I just don't feel quite safe answering that question. Okay, that's, so. that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, makes sense. Um, the next question is, what is new in addressing the needs of the unsheltered? What is new? Wow, what is new? What is What will be new if I get the opportunity to lead will be cooperation and collaboration with the county. It's imperative and it's not happening currently. We need their help to lift this massive crisis that we're dealing with. And, you know, Salem's not unique, but we do have one of the biggest problems in the state and we're being, much is being required of us. Uh, and I don't believe we have a good handle on how many people are actually homeless in our city. And homelessness is a broad spectrum. It's not just uh, the people that we see in crisis, uh, whether it's mental health or addiction problems. It could be those who were on the edge of a medical bill and that one more thing happened and they couldn't be there. We also happen to have a contingent that I believe is here just to do bad things because they're not. it seems like they're not going to get in trouble for it. So we're dealing with a variety of folks, and we need to figure out how to best deal with them one by one. Thank you. Um, our final question is, identify areas of public safety concerns, and then explain what you see as solutions. Public safety is a passion of mine. Um, I don't want to cop on every corner. That's a misconception. <laughs> I want public safety. If people in Salem do not feel safe, then as a governing body, we're not doing our job. Um, I have, frankly, I'm one of them. Because of where I live and because of where I work, I have to deal daily with folks in crisis. I wanna know that somebody's gonna be there when I call. And I feel, frankly, that 
it's unkind to throw down a payroll tax in the name of losing public safety. I find that's not okay. And public safety is our number one job. Mental health and addiction services is the county's job, but public safety is ours. So we need to do a good job of that so people can live and move and work and get about without facing so much difficulty. Okay. Um, thank you, candidate Hoy. Um, and you're now invited to share your two minutes closing comments about your goals for this office is elected and please share your contact information. Thank you. I'm going to do that first so I don't forget. Okay. It's julieforsalem.com um, is my website. You're welcome to reach me in any way. You might see me walking down the street and that's just fine. I'm looking forward to leading this city in such a way that includes collaboration and inclusion and true diversity. I want to engage and I have engaged already with the neighbors in my neck of the woods in Northeast and I'm looking forward to furthering that. There's a lot of smart people in this town and I wouldn't go this job alone. I would go this job with what I call the bench and it's deep and it's wide and there's a lot of really smart people on it. So I'm looking forward to facing the challenges. And again, I think those collaborations with the county, um, certainly the state, and even the federal issues that impact us on our streets daily, we need to be looking at all of that at once and taking care of it one person at a time. Thank you, candidate Hoy, for your interview and for sharing your thoughts. And thank you to Capital Community Media for their help with the technology and production used to create this program. Thank you to the League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties for their design and preparation of the program. And thanks to you for watching in order to become a more informed voter. For more local, state, and national nonpartisan information on candidates and ballot measures, visit the League's website at vote411.org after April 15th when candidate data will be uploaded. You have until April 30th to register to vote or to update your registration. Ballots go out on May 1st. They need to be postmarked by or on May 21st to be counted. Elections matter. Remember to vote because your vote counts. <laughs>